See, this, this is why you can never take the foot off the pedal when it comes to prioritizing winning the game that's right in front of you. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kowachowicz of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins that I hope you'll check out. Cardinals 7, Pirates 5, last night in St. Louis. If I told you that the Pirates were dominating this game through 5.5, that they had a 5 nothing lead, that they had some excellent defense, that they had a Diego Castillo home run, that they had a three-run homer from Michael Chavis, and that Mitch Keller was pitching out of his gourd, and that they lost you might wonder, what precipitated such a thing? And, oh, could it possibly have been some inane decision involving some nothing-slash-nobody player that we just have to get a look at? In this case, Anthony Bonda. Anthony Bonda, as I'm speaking to you right now, has a 2.20 whip. That's walks and hits per inning pitched going to repeat that. He allows an average of 2.2 runners to reach base safely per inning. And this terrible pitcher was brought on to try to do something about runners at the corners and one out when Derek Shelton took Keller out. No problem with the hook. Keller was at 97 pitches. He's too important. Pitcher's health, blah, blah, blah. But really, you had to go and bring in the guy with the 2.20 whip to try to get out of this? Because what? Matchups? Seriously? Well, exactly what everyone, probably Shelton too, knew was going to happen, did happen. The Cardinals put up five runs that inning, including a three-run home run of their own, and then scored in the next inning off Chris Stratton, and that was that. But I don't want to make this about one decision and one game, because what's most confounding about this is that it happens constantly. It happened the other day to Zach Thompson, where a bad pitcher is brought in and gets bad results when the team has a lead. Now, here's a crazy concept. If you have good relievers, use them when you have the lead. That is a good situation. Easy way to remember it, right? Good situation equals good reliever. Bring in the good one. Bring in Will Crow. Sure, he's made 24 appearances. Sure, he's been used a lot but not that much. And for every time that he does get used, when there isn't a lead, here's another crazy concept. Don't! <laughs> I mean, this isn't all that complicated. It's not just about relievers pitching on the day that they, they're, they're feeling good or that they're cleared or they've had X number of days of rest or whatever it is. It's about using them to win games. In turn, use Anthony Bonda, if you must, in games that you're losing. Bad games equals bad relievers. Put that on the cheat sheet as well. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. I know, go, go ahead and give it to me because the games don't matter, okay? The results don't matter. But there's a problem within having a general manager 
who doesn't care enough about the immediate product to make sure that there's more than one right-handed bench bat available than Yu Chang, or that there's more than one left-handed reliever available than Anthony Banda. This does start with personnel, and this does start with Ben Charrington not caring in the slightest, and he couldn't make this clearer himself about results and outcomes in 2022. Remember his response to me when I asked a few days ago at PNC Park what he thought about that sweep at Dodger Stadium? Couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. And I get where he's coming from to an extent. He's still focused on the process, on getting better at this and that and these individual things, and he's not looking at final scores. But the problem with not looking at final scores ever, the problem with accepting that losing is okay at any point in the process is that, I dare say, it's an awfully hard thing to get back once you've let it go. Did you know that Charrington, in his last seven seasons, as a GM, has finished last six times. Did you know that? He might do it again this year. That can't be ruled out. And if you can tune out results, if you can tune out the difference between wins and losses for that kind of a stretch, how do you get it back? How do you get that fire back? You know, how do you get that urgency back? How do you get that, I've just got to make an acquisition right now, as opposed to, oh, here's a guy I like who's 0 for 15 with 11 strikeouts for Cleveland. We've always liked him. Let's give him a chance. How do you get that back? How does Shelton get it back? He's down there on the field. He was down there in the dugout in Los Angeles when his players were sending a very loud signal to their manager that they wanted this game, this sweep. And he heard it or felt it or whatever and let David Bednar throw 50 pitches on that mound, which goes against absolutely everything that a developing team does. Why? You know, he felt something. I found that to be encouraging. I'm not sure that I do right now. Because everything went right back. Not just the scores. Not just the fact that the Pirates have lost, what is it, seven in a row, eight in a row? I don't even know. But I'm talking about that edge. And you talk about building a culture and wanting to do things right and the Pirate way and whatever else. And your players, the ones in whom you're supposed to be instilling this culture are right there with you as you're bringing Anthony Bonda into this game. They see this. They feel it. They're the ones that have to walk off the field without a celebration. In a game, they were dominating until that decision. How does Shelton magically flip that switch? And in what year? And how much damage has to happen between now and then to maybe prevent it from ever getting good? When we come back, J1Q. And today's J1Q comes from Chad, who asks, Dan, when is it fair to question Derek Shelton's job status? This is getting absurd. You know, Chad, I think it's fair to question anyone's job status in year three of a process. And I know there are uh, there are enough people who follow the team closely, passionately, and knowledgeably who disagree with me on this, that this is supposed to be just another uh, scratch off year doesn't even count don't even acknowledge it it's just a bunch of experiments going on for six months that's why you're seeing Travis Swaggerty up then down Hoy Park is up and down more than a yo-yo it's just a lot of let's see what this guy's got and the same thing goes 
for a lot of these crappy waiver pickups, or in the case of Chang, a crappy trade. But it's fair. I mean, it's fair. The Pirates had one final at bat in that game last night in St. Louis, and the pinch hitter that Shelton sent to the plate, and he was the only option, was Michael Perez with a 107 average. That's not on Shelton. That's on Charrington. That's on Charrington not giving a flying you-know-what about the current season and not worrying in the slightest that anyone might think anything of it. It's completely embarrassment-free, and it doesn't help. It doesn't advance anything. Major League Baseball is not a Petri dish for a GM to mess around with into infinity. There has to come a point where you say, where are the results? The same obviously applies for the field manager. But when no one over your head cares if you win or lose, and they only discuss with you on a regular basis how you deployed somebody or whatever, then you sleep pretty well at night. You do. You know that you're doing a good job because you're hearing it. You're hearing from your superior that you're doing just fine. You're doing what we want. And I'll repeat, I do see the virtues of focusing on something bigger. I really do. But I also feel very, very strongly, and I've maintained this since going back to before spring training of this year, that winning helps. It doesn't get in the way. It's not a hindrance. It's not a nuisance. It's not a distraction. It lifts your players' spirits individually and collectively. It lifts the spirits of the instructors on the field, of the manager who's on the field. You're seeing and feeling the rewards of your work. As I confirmed with Shelton himself when he returned from Los Angeles, everyone walks with their chin up a little higher, and it makes it easier to do everything that they want to do that day. So you tell me, when is it too soon? When is it too late to start talking about accountability? It's year three. O'Neill Cruz is going to be up this week. Ruanzi Contreras is already here. At what point is it going to be okay to say, hey, listen, look around this clubhouse. A lot of the players that we want to build this franchise on are already here. You're new. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be streaks and slumps. But you're here. And now we can start putting something together. Again, individually and collectively. A lot of that mojo that they themselves, the Pirates players, were talking about in returning from Los Angeles. And you're going to pull the rug out from under that because what? So that you can get a look at Yu Chang? So that you can save a couple bucks by not going get another catcher? A real catcher? A major league catcher? Not Perez or Tyler Heineman or whoever that was that came up yesterday? To what end? so that you can uncover some mediocre reliever that you can sign to a one-year deal? That's part of the objective? That's even a fraction of the objective? Uh Uh-uh. No. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that Charrington set into his mind, entering the 2022 season, that this was going to be nothing other than six months to flush down the garbage disposal. Other than you know, individual here, individual there, process here, process there, without ever weighing the importance of winning, of winning to what it is that they want to create here. Uh, I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates. I'm not prepared to ask you again why it is that you do. I'm just glad that you're here. And you know what? We are going to have another one tomorrow.